Shalom. This is Yair Davidi from Brit Am, Movement of the Ten Tribes of Israel. Today we are about to speak concerning the future reunion of the Ten Tribes of Israel with Judah, with the Jewish people. We know that originally there were twelve tribes of Israel, as we have said frequently in the past. The twelve tribes of Israel split into two different sections. The Ten Tribes of Israel, the northern section, split apart, created its own kingdom. And it was separate from Judah. It was separate for, from Judah for several hundred years. Then it was conquered by the Assyrians and all of its inhabitants were taken away captive into different sections of the Assyrian Empire. And there they lost. They lost consciousness of their identity. Nevertheless, they uh, retained ethnic cohesion. They re remained as uh, separate, recognizable entities that may be traced through historical and uh, related studies, and we have traced them and we have proven that the majority of the ten tribes of Israel went to Western Europe and they are now to be found amongst Western nations. We have proven it. They do not know who they are, but in the future they will know and they will return and they will reunite with Judah. And this may seem impossible and may seem incredible, but this is what the Bible says. And this indeed is what will happen. We have numerous proofs showing that the Ten Tribes are amongst Western peoples. We have hundreds of proofs. You may see it on our website and in our literature. And it is there. The evidence is there. The evidence is very strong and it is telling and it is irrefutable. Amongst other things, the evidence that we have shows that the Ten Tribes, according to the Bible, they will be separate from Judah. They will not be part of Judah. They will be on their own. They will in, be independent entities, not part of the Jewish people. They will be not known to Judah. Judah will not recognize them, neither they shall know of their own ancestry. They shall not know who they are. See Isaiah 49, verses 13 to 14, and also uh, Isaiah 49:21 and Hosea, the book of Hosea, verse 1, 7, chapter 1, verse 7. The ten tribes in the places of exile will practice Christianity. They will not be Jews. They will not practice the Jewish religion. See Isaiah 2, 8, 2, 13, 2, 16, 11, 12, and Jeremiah 31, 6. And see the Brit Am commentaries to these verses. See our commentary to these verses and our explanation as to how we know that the ten tribes in the places of exile will in fact be Christians. Despite the religious differences, despite their ignorance of their ancestry, Something will happen in the end times that will enable them to return, that will enable them to become, to become conscious of who they are and to return and once again reunite with Judah. They will also be associated with elements in Europe known as Goma, the son of Japheth. Goma will somehow or other be associated with them. In other words, there will be non-Israelite influences Amongst them, and uh, sex portions of their population will not belong to the Israelite nation. Nevertheless, those Israelites amongst them, those who belong to the ten tribes of Israel, will separate themselves out and once again be reunited with Judah. This is intimated uh, from the book of Hosea, chapters 1 and 2. Very many verses in Scripture speak of the future reunion of Judah with Joseph. To us, we may think that this is impossible, we may think it's something that could not happen, but it will happen. We, things do happen in history. A few years ago, who would have imagined that the communist nations, this whole totalitarian group of monolithic, ideologically committed uh, enemies of the Western world will suddenly, almost overnight, give up, say we can't go on anymore, we don't believe in, what, in our false idols anymore, we just want to uh, be like you as much as possible, please help us. And of their own volition, in their, of their own free will, they would just uh, turn everything over, outlaw the, the Communist Party of their own free will, and uh, help the skelter do as much as they possibly can to imitate the West in every way possible, including the ways that we, we would normally not be so proud of. This happened, and if you had been told beforehand that it was about to happen, you would not have believed it. You would have found it uh, very difficult to comprehend and to accept, but it did happen. Only in hindsight can we see that it had to happen, that there, there were reasons for it. Beforehand, we, not, we could not foresee it, and so too, the underground, there are movements and there is a change of uh, attitude in potentially amongst the 
ten tribes of Israel, the descendants of the lost ten tribes of Israel that are mentioned there, they will indeed return, and they shall reunite with Judah. Nevertheless, no one denies that it seems incredible, and it seems as if it couldn't happen, but it will happen. It seems so difficult that even the prophets themselves found it difficult to accept, but they saw it with their own eyes, and this is what is indeed happened. Ezekiel 37 compared it, compared the reunion of of Judah and Israel and the awakening of the ten tribes to, uh, to a fuller consciousness of their Hebraic ancestry, he uh, compared it to the, re to the uh, resurrection of the dead. Ezekiel 37 tells us, He tells us, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around. Behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry, or dry bones. They were a valley full of dry bones. And he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Oh God, you know. So I answered, Oh Lord God, you know. And again he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God says to these bones, Surely I will put breath, breath in you to enter into you, into you, and you shall live. We'll put sinews on you and you shall bring flesh upon you, cover you with the skin and put breath in you. You shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. And so on. And then it tells us, uh, Ezekiel continues and tells us how the bones uh, assemble together and uh, uh, receive flesh and muscle and skin and become whole bodies and rise on their feet. And um, th this, is, this is what's happening. And this is, this is how what uh, Ezekiel says he saw. He was taken into this valley and he saw these dry bones become alive and become once again living bodies. Uh, so what does this represent? There are those who say that Ezekiel foresaw the resurrection of the dead in the future. And scripture does say that in the future there will be a resurrection of the dead. We have Isaiah 29, 20, we have Isaiah 26, 19. Your dead shall live together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing you who dwell in dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Well, so Isaiah 66, 14, you shall see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like grass. And so on. Daniel 12, uh, verses 2 to 3 says, that many of those who sleep in the dust of those shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine in the, like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And so on. So scripture does speak about the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection of the dead will take place. The question is, Ezekiel may or may not have been speaking of the resurrection of the dead. He may have intended also, in addition to his main, the main point of what he was saying, he may have also intended to intimate to us something about the future resurrection of the dead, but his main point was that the spirit that would be a spirit, a renewing spirit, a, a revival of Israelite consciousness in the Israelite peoples. And how do we know this? We know this from the previous verse, last chapter 36, and Ezekiel speaks of God calling the Israelites to come out of their places of exile and uh, of Him purifying them and bringing them out, bringing them forward. Alexander Sophia has written an article on this subject, a very interesting article that may be seen on our website, and he discusses this point and he brings the relevant verses. And he, uh, and he proves what we are now saying. He shows how Ezekiel 36 is leading up to Ezekiel 37, and Ezekiel 36 describes how God inspires and revives the spirit of the Israelite nations to know who they are and to know about their ancestry. So it says Ezekiel 36, 24, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Also in Ezekiel 36, 25, 28, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean, and your hearts will I give you. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. The tribes of Israel, both Judah and the ten tribes, will be purified and they will receive a new spirit. It will be as if they are being revived from the dead. So this is what Ezekiel is telling us, the tribes of Israel, all of the tribes, Judah and Joseph together, shall be reunified, they shall awaken to their ancestry and come back to where they once were, to where God wants them to be. And this may be shown also from from the continuation of Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel speaks about uh, having to take two sticks and to put them together and that these sticks represent 
the coming together of Judah and Joseph, as it says in Ezekiel 37:15. Again, the word of the Lord said to me, As for you, son of man, take a stick for yourselves and write on it. For Judah, for the children of Israel, his companions, and take another stick and write on it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another, for yourself into one stick, and they shall become one in your hand. So this is what he was commanded to do. Ezekiel was commanded to take two sticks, to take one stick, the stick of Judah in one hand, and in another stick, the stick of Joseph, the stick of Ephraim in the other hand, and to put one on one, and they shall be one in your hand. And that is what Ezekiel was commanded to do, to do and this is what he did do. And this, these two sticks were made for us by Tom Turner, and he shows us as Ezekiel was told to take one stick, to take the stick of Judah in one hand and to put it upon his hand and to put it on the stick of Joseph, the stick of Ephraim and his companions and they shall be one stick, they shall be one stick in your hand. The two sticks shall become one. One stick. And that symbolizes the coming together of Judah and Joseph. And this is a work of art, these combined sticks or these two sticks that become one it was made by, for us by Tom Turner of Idaho. And you may get in touch with him and order your own assembly representing the two sticks of Ezekiel 37. And so this represents the future reunion of Ezekiel 37 of Judah and Joseph of Ephraim and the ten tribes coming together with Judah. And he continues... In verse 21, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37:21. Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land, and I will make, make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God. God will be the God of all of the children of Israel, of the united tribes of Israel. And they shall be my people, and we will be his people. The tribes of Israel together will be the, tribe, will be the people of God Almighty, of the God of Israel. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel. God will make us holy. God will help us. God will uplift us and purify us. And my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. The temple will be re rebuilt, God willing. We shall worship God in the temple, Judah and Joseph, the twelve tribes of Israel, all together united in one kingdom. Thank you. This is Yahid David speaking to you from Jerusalem on behalf of Brit Am, movement of the ten tribes of Israel.